So customized cocktails along with the unique atmosphere. It's no surprise it's led to national recognition. Bill's mixing drinks up at the Monarch Cocktail Bar on the plaza. The first cocktail we're gonna make today is the Eagle 20. Yeah. And it's got one of your, spe the special ice cubes that I know you guys make, and you have to prepare this because we're gonna get a cool design out of the ice, right? Yeah, so we like to jewel the cubes uh, fresh. Um, but the cocktail itself is uh, essentially uh, play on an old fashioned using a split base of um, Eagle Rare Bourbon and Hyde Number no. 4 President's Cask. Okay. Um, which is an Irish whiskey that's really popular right now. I like it a lot. Um, we start with just a little bit of the triple treacle syrup. And it, uh, it has Bogart bitters in it, which is uh, a bitter, it's made by Bitter Truth, kind of a classic style bitters that's super, super bitter. Got a lot of um, oh, really? tree roots and things like that in it that the recipe was supposedly lost for a while and they kind of brought it back. It's really nice. It was lost um, and then found like Amazing yeah. Grace or something. Now it's also Bitter Truth. Are they a, uh, a local place? No, no, no. Oh, I believe okay. they're actually German actually. Okay. All right. And then just build it like an old fashioned. All right. Get it chilling. And then we also smoke the glass with um, uh, cigar, cigar tobacco. Okay. Okay. Oh, cool. So you're just lighting it like you would a pipe here? Uh -huh. And then and it starts to smoke, and then we'll trap the glass. So it'll smoke and all the oils will stick to the glass. Oh, cool. So you recently, uh, Monarch just won a national award. It's the, uh, the Cocktail Bar of the Year Award uh, from the Nightclub and Bar Magazines. Uh, what does that Association? mean to you guys uh, to win like a big national award like that? And what does it mean to like Kansas City to have a bar featured in that publication? You know, we're really happy to see um, an award like this coming back to Kansas City. Um, the last people to win it uh, in Kansas City was uh, Manifesto when it oh, reopened. Yeah. Uh huh. So it's really cool to see it come back. Um, last year, Black Tail out of New York won, and um, they're doing amazing things. One of my friends there, Jesse Vita, run mm -hmm. that program. So oh, cool. So that's smoked now? Uh-huh, get a little smoke there. All right. I'll see this. Okay. So you just kind of- Strain that right in. You just kind of shaved a little bit some of the- Uh-huh, uh just the to off give it a little cube. jewel. Wow. Look. What does it do when you, when you uh, burn just the orange? Caramelizes, just caramelizes the oils a little <laughs> bit so they have a different flavor. Kind of like, you know, um, Anytime you talk about like fresh citrus to cooked mm -hmm. citrus, you know, it's the same same okay. aspect. I wasn't expecting a little flare up, you kind of surprised me there. I got you, I got you. <laughs> How many other people do you take by surprise when you do that? Well, we try to take everybody by surprise here. <laughs> well, that was very cool. And there you go, it is the Eagle 20 with that little surprise at the end. But you're not gonna be surprised anymore. <laughs> but it's here at the Monarch. Well, in just a bit, we'll take a look at their spring menu with a margarita that you'll have to say aloha to have. Well, it's a little chemistry and a little mixology, and it goes the most for making the most popular drink at the Monarch Cocktail Bar and Lounge. Here's how it all comes together. This is the Louisiana Purchase. Okay. We make it with our barrel of Jefferson's Ocean. Um, right now we're on Voyage 16. Made. We use an Infinity Vermouth, house-made bitters. This is uh, salted cardamom. And then there's a little bit of iron in there to help help create a really cool mouthfeel, like as weird as it sounds, like almost when you bite your tongue and you get that like irony taste. Like, oh. It'll kind of do the same thing. That's wild. And then we use we make an Amer Pecan because we can't buy one in the States. Um, so it is, uh, we use Ramazzotti and then Distill Air's um, Orange Curacao with, uh, those, which is subcontract of under Copper and Kings. And then uh, we just infuse it with extra orange peel. I mean, the containers that you're using, it almost, almost feels like I'm in a high school chemistry class or I'm something. I'm all right with that. You know? <laughs> I'm all right with that. So, and I know what you're putting here in here initially, this is something that you probably use in chemistry class as well, right? Yeah, so this is uh, just a little bit of liquid nitrogen. It really uh, cools the glass real hard. We put this on the menu um, for the first time last summer and because we wanted a Manhattan that would show well in the summer and not just the winter months. Yeah. So we were like, well, it's got to be super cold no matter what we do. So. Yeah. So that's really got to be cool. In that. I mean, can you uh, feel it? Oh, yeah. On the so it, it can almost make, if you got a little, it, you can definitely stick to it. And if you leave it in there too long, it'll crack the glass. Yeah. I mean, you can see the way that it's condensing on the outside is from the warmth of your hand uh -huh. on it, right? Yep. So get it nice and cold. And we just dump it out. So we pre batch and portion the cocktail undiluted so that uh, regular strength whiskey tastes cast strength. So you get that big, bold flavor of a nice Manhattan. Okay. Okay. 
talk a little bit about the whiskey that you're using in here? So this is uh, Jefferson Ocean. It's basically a whiskey, um, kind of neat. They are, uh, to my knowledge, it's between an eight and 10 year. Mm -hmm. so they individually barrel them and then put them out on a ship and it goes back and forth across the equator and to a couple different ports. And so it's, it's out at sea um, for between four and six months. Wow. And what that does is you get a little bit of that sea salinity character from it, but it also, with the way the ship works, it's always it's moving, moving on the brass, so yeah. you're, you're forcing the whiskey to move in and out of the wood, giving it a really nice finish. And so the bitters, when we first did it, we put them in the cocktail and you couldn't really taste them no matter how much we were putting in. It was like, well, we're putting in like ounces of bitters into this batch, it's not right. right. Yeah. So we were like, well, what if we just put them on top? And so as cold as it is, the warm bitters sit on top and kind of fluoresce a little and like they stay on your nose and on your palate the whole time. Well, I mean, I can already got a whiff from oh, over yeah, here from, sure. when you, from when you spray it in there and what does that do I mean a lot of people when you put bitters and you just kind of drip drop them in but this is uh, like almost like an aerosol or a, so spray you kind of think it, of you know? like bitters as like the salt and pepper of the cocktail world so like a little bit goes a long way it really just makes it nice and vibrant so look how frosted the glass is still from that liquid nitrogen but it's the Louisiana purchase here at Monarch